Let's talk about endometrial cancer. Across a woman's life, she hits puberty at 11 and menopause at 51. And in order to have endometrial cancer, you have to have estrogen exposure. Estrogen exposure, endometrial cancer. See the alliteration there. So the premenarchal girl who has yet to produce estrogen has no estrogen exposure and so has almost no risk for endometrial cancer. But in the reproductive and postmenopausal age, the, the woman has begun to experience exposure to estrogen because after the onset of menses, every cycle estrogen is produced. And over time, there's a cumulative effect such that the older you are, the more estrogen you have been exposed to. Each month, each cycle, estrogen is made by the ovary. And at ovulation, progesterone is produced. Progesterone is protective. and inhibits the effect of estrogen. Estrogen exposure causes endometrial cancer. Progesterone is protective. And since endometrial cancer is a development of a cancer within the endometrium, you can't really see it. And the only time you should suspect it is in a postmenopausal female who has postmenopausal bleeding. It is possible to get it in the reproductive age. And it will present simply as dysmenorrhea. You'll have abnormal menstrual cycles, but then eventually we'll find the cancer. But what you should really look out for is postmenopausal bleeding. Let's go through the pathogenesis following our model. Estrogen exposure. then causes precancer. And the precancer is hyperplasia. It eventually will become adenocarcinoma. But to get from hyperplasia to adenocarcinoma, it passes through several dis different phases. Cystic, adenomatous, and eventually atypical, which then leads to adenocarcinoma. I just said you should suspect endometrial cancer in any postmenopausal bleeder, but there are a couple of ways you can have excess estrogen exposure. The first one is simply through age. The old estrogen exposure. Other ways to do that is by being obese, since the peripheral conversion of estrogen is higher in the obese patient, and in girls who have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because they are anovulatory, they do not ovulate, they do not produce productive progesterone. And finally, any woman who's received hormone replacement therapy either erroneous, erroneously as estrogen to subdue the symptoms of menopause or a woman being treated for breast cancer with a serum like tamoxifen, which actually is pro-estrogenic for endo the endometrium. So these are the different ways you can get extra estrogen exposure. And unfortunately, there is no screening tool and hyperplasia is asymptomatic. And only after it's adenocarcinoma, full-blown cancer, does the patient present with symptoms. So once you have diagnosed cancer, you have to know how to treat it. And the idea is this. The cancer is within the endometrium. This is the uterus, the vagina, the cardinal ligament, 
pelvic sidewall. And here is the ovary. And the ovary is producing estrogen. And so when you treat endometrial cancer, what you want to do is simply remove the cancer and the tissue that can become cancer, that is perform a total abdominal hysterectomy, and you want to remove the source of estrogen, such that if there are any metastases, it won't have any signal to grow. You do a total abdominal hysterectomy to remove the mass, and you do a bilateral salpingo oophorectomy to remove the estrogen. And of course, if there are distant metastases, you'll probably need chemotherapy. So if someone comes in complaining of postmenopausal bleeding, you know that there's a cancer of the endometrium, so the way you detect it is with endometrial sampling. That is a DNC, dilation and curatage. If you find nothing, no cancer at all, it is the most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding, vaginal atrophy. And so if you see a postmenopausal bleeder, rest assured that more than likely it's vaginal atrophy, but you do not want to miss cancer, so do the endometrial sampling anyway. If vaginal atrophy, treat with creams. This estrogen cream, it does not increase exposure of the endometrium to produce cancer. If instead you've got precancer, and precancer is usually found in the workup of menometriorrhagia or dysmenorrhea in a reproductive age female who has abnormal bleeds. If you find precancer, that is the hyperplasia, you simply can give them protective progesterone and it will reverse it. And being still in the reproductive years, they may prefer this rather than having a total abdominal hysterectomy. She still may want to have kids. But if you find full-blown cancer, atypical or adenocarcinoma, you have to perform the total abdominal hysterectomy and the bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. And finally, if you do endometrial sampling and you find the tumor and you've already identified metastases, she is going to need chemotherapy. To review, the pathogenesis of endometrial cancer is from estrogen. Estrogen exposure causes cancer, while progesterone is protective. Suspect it in one of four patient populations. The first is obese and old. She's obese and has an increased peripheral conversion of estrogen, and she's had a lifetime of exposure. This is the most common patient you'll see endometrial cancer in. It can also be the person who has hormone replacement therapy and is old, either receiving it for menopausal symptoms or for someone who has been treated for breast cancer with a CIRM. You can see it in someone who is younger, who also has polycystic ovarian syndrome, and very, very rarely is the patient who's got a granulosa theca tumor. This is the only way you can get a pre-monarchal girl to even think about having endometrial cancer because granulosa theca tumors can secrete excess estrogen. And they are all going to present with vaginal bleeding. The diagnosis is made by sampling the endometrium dilation and curatage. And the treatment is dependent on the stage. You can use progesterone to reverse hyperplasia but most of these cancers will require total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy, and if they're metastasis, use chemo.
and that is endometrial cancer. We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.